All right, hi. Uh, so in this next example, we'll work out an expression for the differential of S uh, entropy using independent variables, temperature, and pressure. So if I want to calculate the change in entropy uh, for a given process, um, and I want to use uh, temperature and pressure as my two intensive variables to pin down the state of my system, um, this will give me a uh, means uh, by which I can calculate or readily calculate that change in entropy. As a reminder, again, uh, our goal is for our final expression to only contain P, V, T, C, P, and C, V. Okay? And while I work through everything, I'll have my uh, handy dandy equation sheet um, open, um, which I'll use to reference uh, essentially Maxwell relations, uh, fundamental equations, and if you need to recall them, definitions of C, P, uh, and C, V. Okay, so without further ado, uh, just like our example with uh, enthalpy, okay, so we start out, and so in step one, if I want an expression for the differential of S using independent variables T and P, I start by writing my mathematical expression for the differential of S using independent variables T and P. So DS is partial S partial T at constant P deep T plus partial S partial P at constant T dP. Okay, so that's step one. And then step two is to go to our equation sheet and see if we have a Maxwell relationship or a heat capacity relationship we can plug in. So going over, I see I have a Maxwell relationship for ds dp at constant t. Okay? Note, it also looks like I have a heat capacity relationship, but ignore these for now. Okay? Just keep in mind our definitions of cp and cv, and we'll derive these terms uh, momentarily. Okay? So I have a Maxwell relationship I can plug in, namely that ds dp at constant t is negative dv dt at constant p. So going back then, this allows me to write this as ds is partial s partial t at constant p dt uh, minus partial v partial t at constant p dp. Okay? So second term is fine, only contains p, v, and t. First term though contains entropy, so it's not satisfactory for our final expression. Um, we don't have a Maxwell relationship or heat capacity relationship we can plug in. So we're stuck. So what do we do when we're stuck? When we're stuck, we go back to our fundamental equation. In this case, it would be fundamental equation for S. And work out an alternative expression for the differential of S with respect to T at constant P. And see if that gives us an alternative expression that we can plug in a heat capacity relationship or Maxwell relationship for. Okay. So going back to my equation sheet, I don't have a fundamental equation for S, right? And you know, the reason being is that you know if we would went back to a combined statement of the first and second law, um, so we wrote it in an expression for the uh, wrote it as an expression for the differential of U, but if you want an expression for the differential of S, you could just rearrange and solve for for dS, right? And so you know thinking of that, there's two expressions, two of our fundamental equations contain dS, right? Our expression for du and dH which we could use to solve for ds, to get a fundamental equation for ds. So now it's a matter of which one do I use? Okay, well, I'm interested in ds dt at constant p. And so since pressure is going to be held constant, I'm looking at the second expression because I know that that will allow me to kill off uh, a second term, right? So if I have dp dt at constant p, it's going to be zero. So since pressure is being held constant, I'm looking at this enthalpy equation here. Cool. So I go back, okay, and so now in terms of writing down our fundamental equation, for the case of H, I'm going to write this, or for S, um, I'm going to write this as dH is um, uh, S, uh, PD, uh, TDS, I'm sorry, TDS uh, plus VDP, all right, having a, a memory lapse there for a second. Okay, so I could rearrange and solve for ds, but I'm going to leave it as is, and we'll rearrange at the very end. Okay, so then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through, or divide my differentials through by dt. So dh dt, ds dt, dp dt, and I can only differentiate with respect to one variable at a time, as so I hold the other constant. P constant in this case, and then you know, in theory, these become curly differentials. Although 
with this pad it makes things a little eh, ugly. Okay. All right. So now on the left hand side, I have dH dt a constant p. Okay. And you know rather than just write it down, dH dt a constant p, I know is my definition of p capacity. All right. Cp. Okay. So that's just Cp is equal to t. Then here's partial s partial t a constant p my quantity of interest. Okay, so I'm interested in ds dt a constant p uh, plus this is v dp dt a constant p. Pressure is being held constant, so this is just the derivative of a constant, which is which is zero. Okay, so I get then the relationship the cp is equal to t ds dt a constant p, or for this problem, ds sorry ds dt a constant p is equal to Cp over T. So now if I go back and plug that into my expression, I get the final equation ds is equal to partial s partial t a constant p dt. Ah, I get the final expression. <laughs> Let me plug in uh, Cp over T. I get the final expression that Cp over T dt um, minus partial v partial t a constant p dp. So now if I have a process in which I use temperature and pressure to define the initial and final state of my system, okay, I have a means uh, that I can use or an expression that I can use to go and calculate uh, the change in entropy. Cool. Um, you know, you could also do other things where maybe you know the uh, pressure of your initial and final state, and you say, um, you know, we isentropically throttle our fluid. Uh, it would give you a way to go and calculate, uh, you know, if you knew the change in temperature or if you knew the initial change or temperature of that that final temperature. Okay, cool. And if we were to try and simplify this again uh, for the case of an ideal gas. Ideal gas is going to be nice in that I know it's just described by the simple expression PV equals RT, our ideal gas equation of state, um, and then these will become useful later on um, when we talk about residual properties. Okay, but for an ideal gas, PV equals RT, the quantity of interest to uh, simplify here is going to be dV dt at constant p, uh, which in theory we, we had, we've done already. Okay, but um, if I take PV equals RT. V is going to be equal to RT over P. So partial V, partial T, a constant P, it will be equal to partial, this is RT over P, partial T, a constant P. So since pressure is constant, right, P is a constant, R is a constant, molar gas constant, this becomes R over P, partial T, partial T, a constant p, uh, partial t, partial t is just one. Okay, so I get the dv dt at constant p is just equal to r over p. So that brings us to the final expression that for an ideal gas, ds of an ideal gas is equal to cp ideal gas over t dt uh, minus r over p. Dp, okay, it's minus r over p because it's a negative dv dt at constant p. Cool. Okay, box that in. Okay, so for an ideal gas, entropy is both a function of temperature and pressure. Okay, what I'll play with next, um, just for completeness, is uh, oftentimes for the case of an ideal gas, you'll see this rewritten in a couple of ways. Okay, so let me just rewrite this here on the second page so we have it and can scroll up. Okay, so we'll typically see um, or often see uh, two simplifications. Okay, and so um, how this is often simplified is uh, by tweaking with the differentials. Okay, so what I mean by that is, okay, yeah. So the differential of log t. Okay, so what's the differential of, of log t? Well, 
the differential of log t is just equal to 1 over t dt. Right? So it's you know, differential of t would be 1 over t then dt, right? The differential of that quantity. Likewise, the differential of log p is just equal to 1 over p dp. So then, that allows me to simplify this as the differential of the entropy for an ideal gas is equal to Cp ideal gas d log t uh, minus r d log p. Okay? And why this is often done is if for an ideal gas um, we have the case where Cp is independent of temperature, okay? Okay, this would allow me to calculate then delta s an ideal gas. Okay, so if I assume Cp ideal gas is independent of T, and I were to, you know, integrate this from my initial to final state, I just get that delta S ideal gas would be Cp ideal gas. Um, then the integral of log T, okay, would just be log ratio of, I'll write it as say T1 is my final temperature and T naught's my initial temperature, minus R log. I'll say P1 is my final temperature p naught's by initial temperature, right? It gives me a, a quick and easy way to calculate this. Cool, right? And then, you know, if you even wanted to go further, uh, you know, a relationship that's often uh, used in your Thermo 1 class is um, you know, looking at changes, uh, looking at how temperature changes with respect to pressure for an isentropic process, right? If I had an isentropic process, that would just mean that ds is zero, you know, or equivalently delta S is equal to zero, um, and I would get that Cp ideal gas, you know, log T1 over T naught is equal to R log P1 over P naught, okay? Let me write this, you know, this is isentropic, okay? And this, you know, I'm just writing this because this is a common one that comes up in Thermo 1 that I see uh, students in 412 using all the time. Uh, and not necessarily knowing uh, what the assumptions are, uh, but you know, okay, we see so far that you know it's only applicable for ideal gases and when heat capacity is assumed independent of um, temperature. But you know, you get this cool relationship. So playing with log rules, this would be log uh, T1 over T naught. Okay, I could bring that up uh, as a power is equal to you know then same thing. This would be hope, log. P1 over P naught. Bring R up as a power. Okay. Uh, so now take the exponential and I get T1 over T naught raised to the Cp ideal gas is equal to P1 over P naught, you know, raised to the R. Okay. Or another way to do it, if I had gone back up here, I could divide through by R. Okay. And that would give me. Cp ideal gas over R here, okay, and that's nice because it's dimensionless, and then R would have disappeared on the, the right-hand side, okay. All are equivalent, okay. Um, with this, you probably have seen in your Thermal 1 class, right, and now in theory you could, you just derived it, right. You just derived it starting with uh, uh, essentially the um, combined statement of the first and second law, right, using just the first and second law of uh, thermodynamics um, and the ideal gas equation of state. Okay, so this is just applicable, again, isentropic and ideal gas. Okay, I guess these things are just so fun we can't, uh, we can't help ourselves. <laughs> you know, here's our expression for the differential of S uh, for the case of an ideal gas. And that's just a simplification of our expression here, right, which is true in general, which we can use to evaluate the change in entropy for um, any system, um, including that of actual real fluids. Excellent.